We are in the middle of a monumental shift in how we view and treat osteoarthritis. Surgeons used to tell people to just deal with the pain. They gave advice like, you know you're ready for a hip replacement when you're crawling back into the office. And that left people thinking, well that sounds terrible. And hold on, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? Am I really supposed to take Tylenol and Advil every day? And the tragic answer to that in many cases was, yeah. But that mindset is so archaic. We need to be more proactive. We need to treat the underlying disease. Bone on bone is not inevitable. A hip replacement is not inevitable. So how can we treat osteoarthritis? How do we slow down the progression? All the while also treating pain, treating stiffness, treating loss of function. Well, it turns out hip injections may actually be one really good way of doing that. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Payne here. Hip injections are an excellent way to treat and manage symptoms related to hip osteoarthritis. And for the longest time, we have been using cortisone injections to help do that. Cortisone is a steroid. It is a very strong pain medication and it is a very strong anti-inflammatory medication. It will help reduce symptoms, but the effects are usually short-lived, usually on average about three months. The bigger concern is we are realizing that multiple cortisone injections are actually problematic. Cortisone is chondrotoxic, meaning it weakens the articular cartilage. And what is osteoarthritis? Arthritis is the loss of cartilage. So while cortisone injections do work, they do help reduce symptoms, they come with a rather significant trade-off in potentially increasing your risk of developing more arthritis. So now you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound great. How come no one told me that before? Well, these studies are relatively new and it does take time for new information to propagate through the medical community. So if cortisone injections have long-term negative effects, what are our other options? For the longest time, the only other option was hyaluronic acid injections. Hyaluronic acid is a substance that is naturally produced in our joints. It acts as a lubricant and it does have anti-inflammatory properties. Pharmaceutical companies have synthetically made hyaluronic acid, which we can now inject into joints. And patients seem to do very well with these injections, especially if it's covered by insurance. But the data is mixed. This randomized controlled trial compared hyaluronic acid injections to placebo injections. They found that people who got hyaluronic acid injections did have significant and clinically relevant improvements in pain and function for six months. However, there was no statistical difference between hyaluronic acid and a placebo injection. And this is where orthobiologics come in. Orthobiologics such as platelet-rich plasma fall under the category of regenerative medicine. Platelet-rich plasma injections used to be considered experimental and were only available to the top athletes as well as in clinical trials. Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, Rafael Nadal, Alex Rodriguez, all of these all-time great athletes used platelet-rich plasma injections to help them speed up their recovery from injuries. Now PRP injections have become widespread and are used to treat professional athletes, NCAA college athletes, the industrial athlete, weekend warriors, and pretty much anyone who wants to live a healthy and active lifestyle but are held back or limited by painful conditions. In fact, the use of PRP injections is quickly becoming first-line therapy in the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. Randomized controlled trials and systematic reviews show that PRP injections are superior to cortisone injections, hyaluronic acid injections, and placebo injections in the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. But what about their use in the treatment of hip osteoarthritis? Are we able to make that logical leap that if it works really well for knee arthritis, it's going to work really well for hip arthritis? This randomized controlled trial compared PRP injections to hyaluronic acid injections. They found that intraarticular PRP injections offer a significant clinical improvement in patients with hip osteoarthritis without any relevant side effects. The benefit was significantly more stable up to 12 months. This systematic review and meta-analysis looked at how PRP injections did when compared to cortisone and hyaluronic acid injections for the treatment of hip osteoarthritis. They found that cortisone injections are recommended as the most efficient agent in hip osteoarthritis patients in the short term. Moreover, PRP is reported to have the highest rank for pain relief for up to six months. So far so good. Clinical trials do show that PRP injections help with symptoms related to hip osteoarthritis. But what can it do for the progression of arthritis? Can PRP injections 
delay the need for a hip replacement surgery. This study looked to answer that question. They found that intraarticular hip injections of PRP in patients with hip osteoarthritis resulted in an improvement in WOMAC scores, with WOMAC measuring pain, stiffness, and function, as well as with hip range of motion at six months. And they also found that PRP injections delayed the need for a hip replacement surgery. And let me explain how we think PRP injections slow down the progression of hip osteoarthritis and delay the need for a hip replacement surgery. Osteoarthritis is caused by the progressive loss and wear and tear of articular cartilage. And every time the articular cartilage cells get injured or damaged, they release a bunch of toxic enzymes and proteins into the joint. The cartilage damage is what causes the pain and the stiffness and the inflammation and the swelling that people with arthritis are so familiar with. And the problem with all of this is that all of those toxic enzymes and proteins go on to weaken the remaining healthy cartilage cells. So over time, you lose more and more cartilage, resulting in more arthritis. And what platelet-rich plasma injections can do is to introduce a huge amount of platelets and growth factors into the joint to change the internal environment, going from a toxic inflammatory environment to one that is more neutral and one that is more normal. And by keeping the environment of that joint controlled, we can hopefully slow the progression of arthritis. Thanks for watching. If you found this information useful, please share with others who may also benefit. Please also consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. I can be found on Twitter at JeffreyPangMD, and I write on my blog at JeffreyPangMD.com. Thanks and see you next time.